Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations and today I have a Disney inspired Minnie Mouse card that I'm going to show you how to make in Cricut Design Space. This card is a very simple one to make and I'm going to walk you through how to create it in Cricut Design Space including adding that written sentiment inside. I'm also going to show you how to do the heat embossed sentiment and all of the fun little shimmery details on this card. A few of the images on this card come from the Happiest Place Digital Collection and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. I'm going to show you how to upload those SVGs into Design Space and how to manipulate them to create this fun card. So let's go ahead and get started making this project. Before you get started in Cricut Design Space, you're going to want to purchase that collection. So you're going to log into my website and then you're going to go to the Promotions tab to the Happiest Place Collection. This collection is only available during July and August. In the Happiest Place collection, there are two digital art collections that you can purchase, the digital art titles and the Happiest Place digital art designs. This is the one we're going to be using today. You're going to click on that image set. There are 20 downloadable SVG files that you get with this collection. Once you have purchased the collection, you're going to go up to your account tab and click on account. And then you're going to click on digital library there over on the left hand side. Now you can download the Happiest Place designs to your computer. You're going to see that they are downloading in a zip compressed file. Once it's finished downloading, we're going to extract those files and we are ready to load them into Cricut Design Space. After opening a new project in Cricut Design Space, you're going to want to click upload there over on the left. You can upload JPEG, GIF, PNG, bitmap, SVG, and DXF images into Cricut Design Space. Our happiest place images are SVGs, so we can upload them into Cricut Design Space. We're going to start by clicking Upload, then you're going to click on the Browse button and find that happiest place images folder. Once you have found it, you're going to click on the image you wish to upload. You do have to upload each one of these individually. So we're just going to start out with that bow image that we're using in our project. I'm going to click on bow, click open. All I have to do is give this image a name and some tags for searching. So your uploaded images are also going to be found in your images tab. You can search by the name and all of those tags that you gave it. So you're going to want to tag it with words that you might possibly search when you're searching in your images library. Now that we've uploaded our happiest place image, let's start creating this card in our canvas. To create the mouse head for this card, I'm going to insert some circle shapes. So I have a larger circle shape and two small two inch circle shapes. Those two are going to be the ears and then we have the head. Now I'm going to insert that bow we uploaded. So I'm going over to upload. I'm going to click on the bow image we uploaded earlier. Then I'm going to insert the image into my canvas. Now it's just a matter of manipulating and moving around the images until you get the look of a mouse head with a red bow. Once you have aligned all of your images and created the look that you like, we're going to weld all of those circles together. Before we weld the circles, I want to duplicate that large circle to create the flap on the card. By duplicating the large circle, I know that that flap is going to be the exact same size as my other large circle. Now I can select the three circles that form the mouse head and weld them together. This forms the base of our card. Now we're going to place the other circle below that base and overlap them slightly, then weld the two pieces together to form the card. The next step is to add a score line. So I'm going to go over to Shapes, click on Score Line. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and then change the length of the score line so that it fits where the card's going to fold. I'm going to select both the card base and the score line and attach them all together. 
Attaching the score line to the card base tells Design Space where to apply your score line when it's cutting out the image. I do have a video that explains attach a little bit more and I'll put that link above. At this point, you just want to resize the card base and resize the bow to fit the envelope that you plan on using. I've just selected the entire image and then typed in the width and the height that I desired. Now I can create that written sentiment inside the card. I'm going to insert another circle shape. I'm going to change the color to white and then I'm going to resize it to fit the center of this little flap. Once the circle has been resized, I can type my sentiment. I'm going to click on text and type what I plan on putting inside the card. When you type your text, you can change it to multiple lines of text by clicking the return or enter key after each word. You can also align the text by choosing alignment at the top of the screen and choosing align left, center, or right. Now we get to choose our font. I'm going to filter out to writing fonts and I'm going to filter my fonts. This allows me to see all of the writing fonts that I own. So I started out by selecting a flower market one and unfortunately the recent update has caused some of my fonts to have these weird triangle images. So I'm going to have to select a different one here. I've chosen the You Are Here font from the Close to My Heart You Are Here collection. Now all I have to do is resize it to fit that white circle. I'm going to choose my pen type, which is a glitter gel pen in black. I'm going to make sure everything's nice and aligned, and then I'm going to attach that text to the white circle. Now we get to cut out our project. So there is that circle with the text attached and the base card with the score line attached. At this point, you're going to choose your material. I've chosen cardstock for intricate cuts for that polka dot bow. It's also told me to load the pen in clamp A, and it tells me what kind of blade I need to use. When people use a pen for the first time, they sometimes panic because the pen doesn't write in the order that you have put in the text. I haven't understood why Cricut does this, what in the programming causes this to happen, but understand that all of the text will be drawn onto your project. You don't need to hit pause, you don't need to unload, you just need to watch and see that eventually all of those letters will be drawn onto your cardstock. Here's another little trick for you maker users. Some of you may not have that single scoring wheel or you don't want to trade out your blade for the scoring wheel. You can edit the tools. All you have to do is click edit tools, choose to use the scoring stylus instead and you can place that scoring stylus into clamp A and use it instead of the scoring wheel. All right, now that you have all of the parts and pieces cut out, I'm gonna show you how to assemble the card. But before I do that, I do wanna do a quick reminder. Click on that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future Cricut tutorials. Here we have all of the parts and pieces for our card. So there is that glitter gel sentiment. We have a white daisy and candy apple bow. I did create an additional circle to go behind this sentiment. We also have the black base with the score line so that we can fold up and create a card. I've chosen to put a heat embossed sentiment on the front of the card using this celebrating you stamp. I love all of those happy birthday sentiments that can be mixed and matched for your projects. I'm going to grab my glitter tray, my all purpose mat, my white embossing powder and my Versamark ink so that I can create this sentiment. I'll start out by rubbing the anti-static bag onto the portion of the background that I'm planning on stamping. I'm going to load my stamps onto some blocks and then I'm going to stamp the birthday sentiment first. This is going to go down on the bottom so I want to make sure my spacing is correct for the next sentiment which is happy. Like I said, I love being able to mix and match the sentiments on this stamp set. Now that the sentiment's been stamped, I can sprinkle it with my white embossing powder. If needed, you can grab a small brush and remove any excess powder from that card. Then go ahead and grab your heat tool and heat set that embossing powder. I always like to start on the back so that the powder is not disrupted by the heat tool. Once all of that powder is melted, it looks like a little chalk drawing right there on the front of the card. The powder usually cools pretty quickly and is smooth to the touch. 
I decided to add a couple of little doodles around the edges of the card. So I've grabbed a white gel pen here. I'm just drawing lines and adding little dots all along the outside and the inside edges of this card. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, occasionally you get to see some of my doodles. Whenever I need to relax or I just need to get rid of the day's worries, I always grab a pencil and I just do random doodles. So I always enjoy when I get a chance to doodle on projects like this. Now it's time to start assembling. Here I'm adhering the two circles to the inside of the card. I've gone ahead and dry embossed the inside of the bow using a little polka dot embossing folder. And I've grabbed my tumble mono glue to adhere the two pieces of the bow. I really do enjoy using this glue. This is something that is new to me and I'm realizing that it has a lot of lead time before it dries, which allows me to adjust delicate elements like this. To add a little dimension and whimsy to this bow, I've grabbed a wooden button. There are a couple of different shapes in that bag of wooden buttons and I was debating between the heart or a couple of the wooden buttons. I did finally decide on the wooden button with the outline around it. I wanted it to be a yellow color, so I've grabbed my Lemonade Shimmer Brush and I've created a little blob of ink there over on the right so I can really saturate this wood button with the yellow color and shimmer. If you choose to add shimmer to your button, you're going to want to set it aside for about 30 minutes so that it's nice and dry before you add any twine or thread to the center of that button. For some added dimension, I'll adhere that bow onto the top of the mouse head using some foam tape, and then I'm going to use some glue dots to make sure that that button's stuck nice and tight to the front of the bow. And this sweet little mini inspired birthday card is all complete. You just open it up and there's that message that says, may all your dreams come true. I love all of the little doodles on the edge. I love the polka dots on the bow. And I especially love that heat embossed sentiment. This card was so simple to make and can be replicated multiple times using your Cricut machine. Don't forget the happiest place digital image collections we used on this card are only available for a limited time. So make sure to stop by my website and snag a few before they're gone. New projects are added every week to my blog and YouTube channel. If you enjoyed today's project and wish to see more in the future, make sure to click that subscribe button and notification icon so you're notified when new videos are added. If you wish to see more Cricut projects like this one, you can click on the collection icon above. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.